Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of Backpacking TV. I'm Eric Hansen, and today on the channel, I have nine cheap and painless ways to make you more comfortable while backpacking. Now, all of these tips are just technique-based. Very little of it is gear, so you don't have to just spend more money on an expensive piece of gear. These are tips and tricks that can be implemented today. Before we get into the video, I'd like to give a quick shout out to LedLenser for helping to make this video possible. LedLenser makes amazing headlamps and illumination for all of your backcountry needs. So if you're looking for a great headlamp uh, or some sort of backcountry lighting, check out ledlenserusa.com. Okay, without further ado, nine ways to make yourself more comfortable while backpacking. Let's go. Okay, the first thing that I would recommend to people who are new to backpacking or who have been backpacking for a long, long time is to have a specific set of socks and underwear that's just for sleeping in. Now, I think that this will go a long way to make you feel more comfortable when you're actually crawling into your sleeping bag at night is just not wearing the same pair of underwear or socks that you sweated in all day long. It's, uh, you know, it's a simple hygiene piece, but I think that you will be surprised at how big of a difference it feels to just crawl into that sleeping bag wearing some fresh, nice fuzzy socks and clean underwear. You will guaranteed to sleep a lot better than if you're wearing that sweaty pair of underwear that you hiked all day in. Ooh, gross. Number two on my list is to simply have a pair of sandals or camp shoes, something to change into after your long day on the trail. So if you've been hiking eight miles, 10 miles, 12 miles, your feet can feel fatigued by your footwear, whether it's a nice pair of boots or your, just your nice uh, trekking shoes, whatever it is, it's really nice for your feet to just give them a break by just wearing a pair of sandals. They don't have to be fancy. They're often best if they're just really light and cheap and they are definitely not a, a fancy pair of sandals by any means, but just something to protect your feet so you can wander around camp without having to throw your boots back on. On a similar note, my third tip has to do with what footwear to choose. So if I'm going backpacking, I love to wear as light of a piece of footwear as I can responsibly get away with. So I really like these lightweight, breathable pieces of footwear. Uh, just these lightweight hiking shoes are far more comfortable to me, and I am way less likely to develop blisters than if I'm wearing some clunky, massive boots. Uh, like I'm wearing <laughs> right now. Now this is about, you have to blend this with the right conditions. Now it's not always gonna be right to wear something like this. It's the winter right now, so these would be pretty cold and uncomfortable, especially at night or in cold conditions, or if it's gonna be wet um, and then water can get in here. But if I can, I am always choosing lightweight footwear over perhaps say the more traditional full hiking boot. And I think that people who have only hiked in the big boots, when they start transitioning to a lighter piece of footwear, say a pair from Ultra or Astral or whatever it might be, uh, you're gonna find that it's far more comfortable and that you develop fewer blisters. My next tip has to do with food. Now, I think that it is really important. If you've been around here on the channel before, you know how much I love peanut butter. And my friends, it is truly my comfort food. So I think that it's really important for you guys out there to find whatever it is that is your comfort food and bring it with you on the trail. Now, it doesn't have to be a big old jar of peanut butter, um, but preferably something lightweight and small, but just having something that makes you feel like, ah, maybe it's just like a little bit of dark chocolate or I don't know what your thing is, M&Ms, Skittles, having that thing that makes you feel a little bit more like you're at home can go a long way to just reminding you that you love being out here, even if the day on the trail has been a little bit tough. Okay, this next tip is literally the only tip that I will provide today that has to do with adding a piece of gear to your repertoire. But I think that if you have not tried trekking poles, adding trekking poles to your repertoire, hiking with trekking poles, going backpacking with trekking poles, here I have my trusty pair, is a really important tip. Now, I used to think that trekking poles were only for the old or the infirm. And I was honestly surprised when I really started using trekking poles for the first time at how big of a difference it made and how much I feel lighter, more comfortable, more agile, 
less nervous about dumping it into a river at a creek crossing, whatever it might be. You will see all the through hikers in the world using trekking poles. And why do they do that? Well, it's going to lighten the load that your body feels, the impact that your body is feeling by backpacking with a full weighted backpack. Now, I don't know the exact science about this, so forgive me any uh, physical therapists out there or athletic science people, whatever that category of life is. Uh, I've heard it said that a good pair of trekking poles will reduce your body's impact on the trail by about 20%. And I, through felt experience, anecdotally, I believe that to be true. Uh, having a good pair of trekking poles, say I'm hiking for 10 miles, my body is going to feel like I only hiked about eight uh, or so after a, that long day by using trekking poles, just because my knees don't feel the same impact, my quads, uh, my thighs, all of the things, especially if it's a steep trail, having trekking poles will really make me feel like I can physically go longer, go farther, and feel better at the end of the day. So adding a pair of trekking poles into your repertoire will really help you out. Okay, my next tip for being more comfortable while backpacking is the tried and true classic, this is no secret here, but lightening your load. Don't carry a huge amount of weight on your back and you will be more way grateful for it. You will be so happy that you didn't carry all of that extra electronics and charging equipment and big cameras and all, whatever it might be. Leave some stuff at home. So I like to say that 20% of your body weight is kind of the max that, uh, that people's carry weight should be. So if you are a 200 pound individual, a 40 pound pack is uh, about as heavy as you should go. Now, obviously you can fudge that a little bit here and there, but it's just a good rule of thumb to try to go on the lighter end as much as you can. So things that I like to leave at home, I often don't carry a camp chair. I'll just find rocks to, to go on. I like to leave behind all of my battery charging packs my cell phone cords, all those things that are really tempting to just throw them in because ah, I might want them or I might need them. There are so many things that you can get away with doing. Uh, one simple thing to do to lighten your load is to not carry a huge amount of water. Water weighs in at 2.2 pounds per liter, and that is the quickest way to add a lot of weight to your backpack. Another really easy thing to do is to not over carry food. I have a habit of carrying way too much food with me on a backpacking trip. Hey, you know, I don't wanna go hungry. And so I'm always nervous about that. So there has been a lot of even recent backpacking trips where I come home with an extra three or four days worth of food, which is just kind of, uh, you know, a big no-no because that is a huge amount of weight that I've been needlessly carrying around. So dialing in your pack weight, drawing it back, shedding a few of the luxuries, lightening your load, and you'll be thankful. All right, I did lie when I said that there was only one piece of gear to add to your repertoire on this list because, my friends, my other tip is to bring a camp pillow. Now, this are, these are cheap, so I uh, forgive me if it's just another thing to add, but these weigh in at uh, like two ounces, so it is uh, super lightweight. They're only, they only cost generally about $30 to $45 but it makes a big difference. Now, I used to be the kind of guy that would, I used to backpack as a guide for a living and spent three years just using balled up jackets and uh, old clothing as my pillow, and it was just fine. However, when I actually started using a pillow, my sleep quality really improved. And I would not go backpacking without a pillow anymore. It's kind of a luxury item, maybe it just means I'm getting old, but I think if you add a pillow into your arsenal, you will sleep a lot better and be more comfortable. Next on my list is to wear loose fitting items for sleep. Now, getting good sleep is a huge part of feeling comfortable while backpacking. And it's honestly what a lot of people get really scared about. So some people like to go and, uh, you know, maybe uh, especially for ladies out there, they like to bring their nice yoga pants that can be, you know, they look great, but sometimes that tight fitting clothing can be really restrictive. It can decrease your blood flow and ultimately make you feel a little bit colder. So just wearing a pair of long johns, a loose fitting mid-weight uh, mid-layer or something like that, uh, or excuse me, a loose fitting base layer or something like that can go a long way to just feeling cozy, comfortable, 
if you're, you know, if it's the summertime and you've been sweating all day, having, and you don't have the ability to bathe, wearing a loose fitting base layer will keep you from sticking to your sleeping bag. And then, you know, those are just little things that will help you feel more comfortable in your sleeping bag. Whether it's warm, whether it's cold, whatever it may be, wear a loose fitting base layer and you'll sleep much better. Last on my tips here of nine painless and cheap ways to be more comfortable backpacking is simply to eat a warm meal before you go to bed. Now, eating well and sleeping well go together hand in hand, and if you do those things, you can pretty much live in the great outdoors indefinitely and be a happy camper. But my trick, you know, some people, when they get to the end, they're tired. They just feel like maybe I'm just gonna crawl into my sleeping bag and go to sleep without eating a good warm meal. But I think that's a big mistake, and you're missing out on that satisfaction that your body feels if you just eat like a, another granola bar or something like that. Eating a hot meal will make you feel that satisfaction, but it will also prime your body to be more suited for a good night's sleep. Especially in cold weather camping, your body is going to be burning through calories like crazy and giving it a proper warm meal to actually like throw a bunch of logs on the fire before you go to bed. It's giving your body fuel to burn as you sleep. So that's it. Those are my tips and tricks. I hope that you enjoyed this video and gleaned something. These are nine painless ways to be more comfortable backpacking. But that's probably not all. I bet there's some of you out there who have some great things, some words of wisdom, some advice to have. And if you have something, if you have a nugget for me, leave it in the comments below. Or if you disagree with something, I'd love to hear from you. So anyway, that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, give it that thumbs up. Make sure that you are subscribed here to Backpacking TV. I look forward to hearing from you again. I'm Eric Hansen. I'll see you later.